And that was really the watershed moment when the, when the political landscape of Wisconsin changed dramatically. And it was the beginning of a career that would change America and how Americans looked at themselves. I don't think you have any conception of the danger of the Communist Party. Joe McCarthy's Senate hearings on un-American activities are an infamous chapter in U.S. history. But it's his personality, not his principles, that seemed to motivate him from the beginning. He had an energy about him that I think people admired and could relate to. But I think most people would say he, he was a great guy. There is a dark side to him as well. And what's the and where where does that come from? You know, I think that comes from where he was born and where he came from. This is where he came from, a small farm just outside of Appleton. And this is what's left of the house that he grew up in, along with six siblings and two parents in an Irish Catholic family. It was the kind of abject poverty that so many American families lived in during the Great Depression. And it's what drove Joe McCarthy to leave. McCarthy won his first election in 1939, beating a longtime incumbent judge in Outagamie County using fighting Bob La Follette style campaigning. When the U.S. entered the Second World War, McCarthy saw the chance to make himself a war hero, revealing more of his political personality in the process. The McCarthy pension for uh, exaggeration and sometimes outright lie uh, comes into play because he claims when he comes back that he was a tail gunner. He wasn't, but even the empty legend of tail gunner Joe got his name out to voters. After the war in 1946, he ran for the U.S. Senate in the Republican primary. He goes up against the legendary but vulnerable Robert La Folla Jr., who had just decided to leave the Progressive Party and rejoin the GOP. He's back in Washington dealing with serious national issues, you know, which is what a responsible senator does. But he wasn't here. And meanwhile, McCarthy is going all over the state. He's taking the campaign techniques that he he honed as a, you know, as, as a district, as a circuit judge, a, a candidate. And now he's doing it on the state level. Ironically, it's his ability to campaign more like fighting Bob than La Follette's own son that allows McCarthy to win the seat in 1946, becoming the youngest U.S. senator at age 38. He doesn't particularly distinguish himself during the first couple of years uh, uh, in, in, in the Senate. People like him at parties, but his colleagues don't really respect him. But soon they would fear him. In an unrecorded speech to a West Virginia women's group in February of 1950, Joe McCarthy made the first of his many claims of a communist conspiracy in the U.S. government. And his life changes. It's one of these things that just ex explode. Although McCarthy often had no proof of his accusations, it was the Cold War against the Soviet Union, and McCarthy was not the first, nor the only American, to take an anti-communist stand. There was this feeling that the whole country was going to the communists, that there was this great danger, and so this fear permeated the time. McCarthy took advantage of it. Uh, whether you knew that he was a member of that uh, communist organization or not, and so it went for about four years, from 1950 to 54, as Joe McCarthy's anti-communist campaign spread to include his accusations against U.S. military leaders and ultimately anyone who didn't agree with him. And so there a lot of the senators began to step away and were careful about what they said. He had become that powerful because many folks throughout the country thought Joe was right. He was like them. But to other Americans, McCarthy was the face of evil. And even though history would show that there was communist spy activity in the U.S. at the time, McCarthy's methods indicted many on mere accusation or guilt by association. Among them, the famous Wisconsin senator whom he beat in 1946. I've read some accounts uh, that attribute your father's death to Joe McCarthy. Yes, I do think that that's, that had a, a possibility a strong possibility of contributing to his suicide because he was fearful that um, he was going to be called before McCarthy's anti-communist committee in the, in the Senate. Bronson LaFollette recalls his father, Robert LaFollette Jr., investigating labor violations in California and that a member of that committee had been a member of the Communist Party. But McCarthy's campaign also created a bold movement against him in his home state. 
I got really my start in politics by participating in the Joe Muscoe movement. Uh, people forget the fact that we once started in Wisconsin a recall movement against Joe McCarthy. State Senator Fred Risser says McCarthy's defense was to call the recall movement a communist plot. He started scaring people. And we had a situation where people would come back and say, you know, I signed that petition last week. Would you, would you take my name off? I just, I'm in business and I just, you know, I'm with you, but I just don't want to be publicly. Public support of McCarthy's anti-communist campaign changed in 1954. In March, CBS News broadcast a scathing report accusing McCarthy of terrorizing his victims. The tipping point came a few months later when McCarthy was holding televised hearings on his claims of a communist plot in the U.S. Army. At one point, he named a young attorney who had once belonged to a lawyer's group he condemned. The attorney's boss, Jack Welch, felt McCarthy had gone too far. Have you no sense of decency, sir? At long last, have you left no sense of decency? I know that hurts you, Mr. Welch. I'll but say it hurts. Very nice name, Mr. Chairman, as a point of personal privilege. I'd like to finish this. Senator, I think it hurts you too, I'd, sir. I'd like Just to weeks after that exchange, polls showed public support for McCarthy was cut in half. In December of 1954, his colleagues disciplined him for his behavior with a formal censure. McCarthy survived to win re-election in 1956, but died the next year of complications from alcoholism. His legacy is hurting the legitimate anti-communist cause, uh, uh, poisoning the political atmosphere through hyper-partisanship and the use of innuendo and guilt by association and outright lies on both sides of the political aisle uh, and destroying our or hampering our, our commitment to civil liberties and, and the rule of law uh, during times of crisis. Although McCarthy's anti-communist campaign did help the Republicans win back the White House in 1952, the negative backlash also helped the new Democrats here in Wisconsin. 